everyone welcome to tutorials point now in this video we will see how the activity of enzyme is decreased or stopped by the presence of inhibitors in a reaction so we will describe the mechanism of inhibition of the enzyme by the inhibitors which are present in a reaction so enzyme inhibition what do you mean by enzyme inhibition and what are enzyme inhibitors? So inhibitors are those chemical compounds which decrease or stop the activity of the enzyme due to their presence. And how do they do it? By disturbing the conformation of the enzyme and disabling the interaction of enzyme with the substrate. So inhibitors prevent the formation of enzyme substrate complex and hence the formation of the product. Now inhibition can be of three types, competitive inhibition, non-competitive inhibition and finally feedback inhibition. So let us first discuss competitive inhibition. As the word is suggesting, there has to be some kind of competition. No, so in, in, in competitive inhibition, what happens is that inhibitor, the inhibitor molecule is structurally similar to the substrate. See in the diagram, this is an enzyme, right? This is the active site of enzyme. Now, substrate is complementary to the active site. Now, so the products are formed. Now, this competitive inhibitor, it is not same as substrate, but its conformation is somewhat similar to the active site and just structurally resembles the substrate. So now, this competitive inhibitor can bind to the active site. Now, when this is binding to the active site, the substrate cannot bind. Now, if substrate cannot bind, the product will not be formed. As a result, the rate of the reaction will decrease. So, when the inhibitor binds to the active site, an enzyme inhibitor complex is formed, which is known as EI complex. So, in this type of inhibition, what happens? The inhibitor is in competition with the substrate. As a result of it, the activity is decreased. Now, this is a reversible kind of inhibition. How? Because what we can do is, we can increase the amount of substrate to that level that there is no competition. So, more and more substrate will come and bind to the active site and inhibitor will ultimately stop its activity. Next is examples of competitive inhibition. So the most common example is the example of inhibition of activity of succinic dehydrogenase enzyme. Now succinic dehydrogenase enzyme catalyzes the formation of fumaric acid from succinic acid. So it oxidizes succinic acid into fumaric acid. Now if in this reaction malonic acid is present, it is a competitive inhibitor of succinic acid because it structurally resembles succinic acid. So what happens is this enzyme decreases rapidly as there is a structural resemblance so malonic acid comes and binds to the active site of succinic dehydrogenase. So the formation of fumaric acid is less. Also sulfur drugs. The sulfur drugs they are used to treat generally bacterial infections. Now how do they do it? Because they act as competitive inhibitors of folic acid synthesis inside the bacteria. So they stop the process of folic acid synthesis inside the bacteria. So bacterial enzyme is affected and as a result the activity is affected. Now the next type of inhibition is non-competitive inhibition. Now here there is no competition for structure between substrate and the uh, inhibitor. What is actually happening is that the inhibitor is binding to some other site of the enzyme. As you can see clearly in the diagram, this is the substrate binding to the enzyme. Now inhibitor comes and binds to this site. This separate site on the enzyme on which inhibitor binds is known as allosteric site. Now when the inhibitor binds to the allosteric site, there is a change in conformation of the active site. So the active site's bonding is affected and as a result substrate can no longer bind to the active site. So inhibitor molecule binds to a site other than the active site. The binding of inhibitor causes conformational change in the active site and as a result enzyme and substrate cannot interact and as a result the product can be formed. But here we have to notice that here if you increase the substrate concentration also that the reaction cannot be reversed, right? Inhibitor will have an activity. So this is an irreversible kind of inhibition. Next, what are the examples of non-competitive inhibition? The most common example of non-competitive inhibition is the cyanide poisoning. What happens is cyanide is a poison which prevents aerobic respiration. How? Because it blocks the electron transport chain. Now, 
if the electron transport chain is blocked or eventually there will be death it binds to the allosteric site of cytochrome oxidase enzyme now the function of cytochrome oxidase is a carrier molecule it is a carrier molecule which carries oxygen in the electron transport chain so it binds to the allosteric site the cyanide binds to the allosteric site and stops the functioning of cytochrome oxidase as a result of it the oxygen transfer will not occur the electron transport chain will be disabled and eventually death will happen next is feedback inhibition now feedback inhibition is just like imagine there's a candy factory and lot of candies are being produced at at various steps and eventually there is an excess of candies now the produ the production people do not need that much amount of candy so what to do you have to stop the production right till the time all the candies have been utilized otherwise they will go stale and there is no use of it it's a wastage so what happens is the candy production team just stops the production of candy for some time and when they are utilized again the candy production starts so similar is the feedback inhibition it acts in the biochemical pathways in cells all of us know that all the reactions happen at different steps so there are various steps involved in every reaction so every each and every step is regulated by each and every enzyme right so those enzymes activity will be affected by the end product if the synthesis of end product is more or excess or built up of end product is there so feedback inhibition it is a type of again allosteric or non competitive inhibition it occurs in biochemical pathways in order to control the amount of product which is formed so this occurs when there is a built up or there is a excess of product i have already explained now cells use this method why do the cells use this method in order to maintain balance so each and every chemical should be in appropriate amount the final product inhibits an enzyme from an earlier step right the product binds to the allosteric site of the first enzyme for example a b c d and e is the product now if e has become more the e will go and bind to the enzyme converting a into b as a result of it the activity of that enzyme will be stopped and the complete reaction will be stopped next this is the diagram very clearly you can see enzyme 1 2 3 product is coming binding to the allosteric site and hence stopping the reaction so to summarize we can say inhibitors prevent the formation of enzyme substrate complex there are three types of inhibition competitive non competitive and feedback in competitive inhibition inhibitor and substrate are are competing with each other for the active site inhibitor enzyme uh, inhibitor enzyme complex is formed and if we increase the substrate amount this can be reversed and non reversible is the non competitive inhibition where the inhibitor binds to some other site of the enzyme which is the allosteric site and decrease the activity by changing the conformation of the active site finally feedback inhibition it is also a type of allosteric inhibition which is utilized by biological cells in order to maintain homeostasis by stopping the biochemical pathway when there is a excess or built up of the product so this was all about how enzyme inhibition happens how enzyme activity is inhibited now we also have to see how enzyme activity is activated so in next video we will learn about cofactors and coenzymes till then thank you very much tutorialspoint.com simply easy learning